So you want to get some rental properties for your nice passive income, but how passive are they really? Most people that I've met that get into property, especially rental properties, are kind of boom, hit in the face in a very stark way. And I think a big reason for that is the education companies out there that are invest in property, you'll be financially free within 90 days. I don't know why I sound like that, but really it's not the way it is. Property is hard work. <laughs> Investing in rental properties is hard work. You've got to find it. You've got to negotiate it, get it agreed, get it through the legals, get your finance in place, get the refurb done, find a great tenant, manage the right tenant, and hope they bloody pay on time. There's a lot of steps between money going out of your bank and money coming back in. So how do you make it as passive as possible? Well, first up, what does passive even mean? So passive investment is you doing the hard work up front and then doing as little as possible on an ongoing basis. And there's a lot of different investment types where you can do this. So for example, you could invest in buy to let property, also known as rental property. You can invest in stocks and shares, treasuries, bonds, and so much more. Ultimately, the more passive you are, the lower the return's going to be, but also the lower the risk. Let me give you an example. In property, you've got something called service accommodation. Service accommodation, think of it as renting out on a hotel basis, a night by night basis. Maybe it's people coming over on the weekend, maybe it's contractors through the week, whatever it is. But that is higher risk because you've got a lot of different people in your property every single week. They could trash it, they could have a party, they could do so much in between, piss off the neighbors and so much more. But also from a management point of view, you've got to check in people every single day. You've got to do turnovers, cleaning the flat, cleaning the linens, doing whatever you need to do. It's a very hands-on process. On the other side of the scale, the most passive investment in property is buy to lets or rental properties, which is what we're talking about, where you can set it and forget it over the long term if you get the right people in place. Now, the only true way of being as passive as possible, and I'll describe what I mean by that in a moment, is to completely outsource the end-to-end -end process. So you might be somebody that sat there, maybe you've got, I don't know, 100, 150, 200,000, you're like, I know I want to get some rental properties, but where do I begin? Well, you can go through and get education, spend your time, get become an expert, and then do that. And I think that's great if you want to be a property entrepreneur, whereas if you're looking to be a property investor, another way is to outsource somebody that's going to find your property, negotiate it in the right area to attract the right tenant, get it through legals, do the refurbishment, get it let out and manage it over the long term. You are still going to have engagement, which I'll go through in a moment. But if that does sound like you, that's what my company does, Aspire Property Group. So if you want hands-free portfolio building for your rental properties, put APG in the comments. That's APG, Aspire Property Group, in the comments. And I'll also put a link in the description. If you want to find out a bit more, we'll put on some free one-to-one -one strategy sessions. So even with that, how hands-free can it be? Well, what you need to understand is, ultimately, it's still your investment. This isn't like a stock in buying some stocks in Facebook where you just put the money in, see what happens, goes up and down. You don't really have to do anything apart from watch it. Whereas this, you are actually owning the asset. You're going to own the property. It's a tenant going into your house, making it their home. Okay, that's the idea of a rental. So you can make that monthly residual income. So even if you completely outsource it, you will still sign off on the contracts and give them a read. You will still sign off on the tenant going in. You will need to make sure that they're getting rental checks. And if you've got a great manager, they will do it. So it's as hands-free as it possibly can be, but is it truly passive? I think a huge amount of this is to do with your mindset. So if you're going out there, and this is on two extremes, I find this. If you are brand new to property, barely know what a brick versus a door is, 
I'm kind of joking there. Then maybe there's a bit of nerves around outsourcing this investment to somebody else, which I get, which is why you need to spend time with them, have deep conversations, check out their reviews, everything you need in order to feel comfortable with moving forward. On the flip side, I know there's a lot of you watching that are 20 years deep, the more old school landlord, done everything yourself, you know, you learned from all the hard school of Knox, you grafted through the years, I don't know why I'm boxing as I'm talking through this, but you're on the other side where the idea of relinquishing that control can be quite overwhelming. Now, ultimately, you are going to find the best deals on your own because you only need to buy one or two, whereas a company is going to need to find 10, 15, 20 on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. You are going to get cheaper refurbs if you do it yourself because you're going to be searching around, negotiating all of that. You're also going to get cheaper management if you do it all yourself. Now, this is why I said, if you've got the mindset of being a property entrepreneur, where you want to spend your time doing that and saving the cost, great, that's going to be for you. But if you've got the mindset of being an investor and you want to be as hands-free as possible, then you really want to have that investment mindset where what you are essentially paying for is time. And that's the real service that we create and others, by the way, we're not the only ones out there, but ultimately you are paying for the time, compliance, education and negotiation of the end-to-end -end process of these deals. So I think there's two ways of going about it. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way. I think it's based on what you want. But what I'm interested in, because I want to get to know who actually watches my videos, are you an active landlord or a passive investor? Let me know in the comments by commenting active or passive, just so I can get to know you a bit better. If you are new to the channel, by the way, and you want to learn more about property investment, especially rental properties, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell. And if you did get value, it really does help me out. Just if you tap that like button, takes you two seconds, and I'll see you in the next video.